The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalova in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to today's Chemistry O-Level Revision Session. I am Festus Futako, your chemistry teacher. We are going to carry out phase four of our Chemistry Revision GCE O-Level examination. Phase four of our revision is on the topics, action of heat on substances, action of electricity on substances, environmental chemistry with air and water as topics. Action of heat on substances. We have seen physical and chemical changes whereby a physical change is that change which is reversible, non-permanent, and a new substance is formed. Example, when water is converted to ice, chemical change. It is a change that is irreversible, permanent, and a new substance is formed. Example, heating of copper to sulfate pentahydrate. Energy. The sources of energy are non-renewable sources and renewable sources. Non-renewable sources are sources that cannot be replenished once used. Example, fossil fuels will have petroleum, coal, or nuclear energy. Renewable sources are those that can be replenished once used. Examples include wind, sunlight, hydroelectric, or geothermal power. On the effects of heating, we have seen thermal decomposition, which is the breakdown of the substance into two or more products that do not combine upon cooling. Examples of substances that undergo thermal decomposition are hydroxides, hydrates, oxides, nitrates, and carbonates. On the screen, we have an example of thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate to give calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, and the decomposition of mercury oxide to give mercury and oxygen respectively.
action of electro electricity on substances. Only the action of electricity on substances we saw, conductors, insulators, electrolytes, non-electrolytes, and the preparation of an electrolyte. This topic has already been dealt with more elaborated. In phase two of our revision lesson on the topic electrochemistry. Air. The atmosphere thread consists of a mixture of gases called air, which supports combustion, which supports life on Earth. On the topic air, we saw the evidence of air as a mixture and components of air and their percentage composition. On the slide, we have a tabular representation of components of air and their percentage composition. For example, we have nitrogen with 78%, oxygen with 21%, carbon dioxide 0.03%, and rare gases 1%. active and inactive air. We saw active and inactive air, and the following processes prove that oxygen is a component of active air. We have breathing, we have combustion, we have rusting. These three processes prove that oxygen is the active part of air. Rusting is an environmental problem, and we define rusting as the formation of brown coal, which is hydrated iron to oxide on the surface of iron due to the presence of oxygen and water vapor. On this slide, we see that important process that has been put down in the chemical division, where iron, oxygen, and water vapor combine to produce hydrated iron to uh, iron three oxide. We equally studied methods that can be used to prevent rusting. We have painting, oiling or greasing, electroplating, galvanization, and you can have others. Air pollution, which is one of the greatest environmental hazards we have. It is defined as an atmospheric condition where the presence of some substances beyond certain concentrations causes harmful effects on man and his environment. There are two types of air pollutants. We have the primary pollutants and secondary pollutants. Primary pollutants are emitted directly from sources. Example, ash, smoke, dust, etc. Secondary pollutants are those produced by chemical reactions of primary pollutants with components of the atmosphere. We have sulfur dioxide, acidic oxides. We equally saw management of air pollution, where air pollution can be, man can be managed by recycling. by recycling of of the substances that are emitted in the atmosphere. Equally, we see that management can be done when the government puts laws that will stop the emission of gases that, are, that move to the atmosphere to cause pollution. We equally have a tabular representation of the air pollutants and their effects. For example, carbon monoxide causes anoxia and death. Carbon dioxide responds to greenhouse effect and global warming. Sulfur dioxide 
That means these lungs increases the rate of mortality. In plants, it causes leaf injury. Oxides of nitrogen cause pulmonary edema and hemorrhage. On the side of plants, they shed their leaves and fruits. Hydrocarbons cause irritation of eyes and lungs, leading to respiratory diseases. Water. Under this topic, we saw natural sources of water. Rainwater, which is the purest form of natural water. Spring and groundwater, which has dissolved minerals from rocks. Hence, a very good source of drinking water. Seas and oceans, they have dissolved minerals and suspended solid impurities. Hence, seawater is not a good source of drinking water. water cycle. We see that there is constant circulation of water. So the water cycle is the constant circulation of water below, on, and above the Earth's surface. Processes involving the water cycle are, we have those that release water vapor into the atmosphere, we have evaporation from water sources, we have sweating, we have transpiration, and those that move water vapor as water from the atmosphere, we have condensation, freezing, where it falls as snow or ice. Treatment of water. Treatment of water can be done at the level of the home, that's domestic, laboratory, or in towns for use. Domestic treatment is done by decantation of filtration and chemical treatment. In the laboratory, it is done by distillation, and the water is called distilled water. In towns, the water is first of all treated by adding lime and alum, which removes soluble impurities in water, process called coagulation, later followed by sedimentation, filtration of the water using fine sand, and chemical treatment by addition of chlorine before it is stored in large tanks for distribution or consumption. Test for water. We have seen physical and chemical tests for water. If for the physical test, the water should be clear, odorless, and colorless. And it should have a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius and a melting point of zero degrees Celsius. Chemical tests for water. You can use an hydroscope to solve it which when we add water to it and it turns from white to blue, then the substance is water. We have an important equation that shows how copper can be converted to copper to beta hydrate and it changes from white to blue. Uses of water. Water is an important chemical with uses at each level. We have domestic, laboratory and industrial uses. At the level of our homes, water is used for drinking, cooking, laundries, and you can name the rest. Laboratory, it is used for preparation of reagents and drugs. Industrial or town use. Large scale manufacturing in large scale in the, uh, laundries, in big industries where they produce drugs, and other areas where water is very, very water and solutions, water pollution. It refers to the presence of foreign particles, which can be organic, inorganic, radioactive, or biological. 
in water which produces harmful effects and decreases the usefulness of the water. Major water pollutants include inorganic minerals and chemical compounds, suspended solids and sediments, radioactive substances, just to name a few, water and solutions. You will discover that we saw that water dissolves almost all solids. And hence, water is a universal solvent. We saw in the definition of solution that a solution comprises a solvent and a solid, and the solvent dissolves the solid to form a homogeneous mixture. But some substances in water form two layers, form a suspension, and we call it a heterogeneous solution. Types of solution. Dilute solution, concentrated solution, unsaturated solution, saturated solution, and supersaturated solution are some of the solutions that we have dealt with in our chemistry lesson. Hardness of water. Hard water is defined as water that forms an insoluble scum or does not latter readily with soap due to the presence of higher than usual levels of dissolved calcium and magnesium ions. We saw two types of hardness, temporary hardness, we saw the effects of temporary hardness on firing of kettles and boilers. We have an important equation that shows how temporary hardness can be removed, where calcium bicarbonate decomposes when boiled to produce calcium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. That leads to firing. Permanent hardness. We use washing soda to precipitate calcium carbonate from solution to remove temporary hardness. Salt. Advantages of hard water and disadvantages of hard water. We saw some elaborate examples of the advantages and disadvantages of hard water. Amongst them, advantages of hard water, dissolved minerals, make the water to have a better taste. And the calcium ions that are found in water are used for building of bones and teeth in animals after consumption. For disadvantages, we have wastage of soap due to formation of scum, firing of kettles and boilers, thereby using more energy in heating. Salts. Salts can be defined as substances formed when ionizable hydrogen ions of an acid have been replaced completely or partially by an equivalent metal or ammonium ion. We saw the various types of salts, just to name a few. As highlights, we have normal salt, example sodium chloride. We have acid salt, example sodium bicarbonate. We have basic salt, zinc, chloride, hydroxide. Preparation of soluble salts. Here we highlight methods by which we can prepare, prepare soluble salts. We have the action of dilute acid on the metal. And we have there on the slide magnesium reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid to give magnesium chloride. Action of dilute acid on an alkali or called neutralization. And here we see, as an example, the neutralization of sodium hydroxide by nitric acid to produce sodium nitrate and water. Action of dilute acid on a metallic oxide of carbonate. Here we see 
the reaction of calc copper two oxide with dilutionary acid to give copper two sulfate and water. Salts are in solution and they can be recovered in a crystalline form by the following methods. Heating to dryness. The solution is placed in an evaporating dish and heated slowly where water evaporates and the salt crystallizes, example, sodium chloride. It should be noted here that other chlorides that supply cannot be prepared by this method. We have crystallization. These are salts that cannot withstand dry heating and the salt placed in an evaporating dish is heated to concentrate. And the concentrated solution is allowed to cool and crystallize, where the crystals are filtered, washed with cold distilled water, and dried between field papers. Preparation of insoluble salts. They are prepared by two methods, by double decomposition, and by combination of synthesis. Here on this slide we have preparation of an insoluble salt by double decomposition. Silver nitrate reacting with sodium chloride to produce an insoluble silver chloride and sodium nitrate. It should be noted that here this is one of the, the tests of the chloride ion where it produces a white precipitate. We have combination of synthesis. Reaction of ion with sulfur to produce iron 2 sulfide. This is an example of a chemical change. Iron is gray, solid, sulfur is yellow, and iron 2 sulfide is black. Water of crystallization. It's an important concept that should note that when some salts are crystallizing out of solution, they combine chemically with water. Example, we have copper two sulfate pentahydrate, magnesium sulfate heptahydrate, just to name a few. What is the importance of water of crystallization? We see that the level of the shape and color of the salt. The salts that have water of crystallization are normally called hydrated salts. When they lose the water, they become anhydrous salts. Effects of exposure of salts to air. A fluorescence. This is when the substance upon exposure or heater loses some or all of its water of crystallization, thereby losing its shape or color. We see copper to sulfate pentahydrate decomposing copper to sulfate and water, changing from blue to white. Deliquescence, which is the phenomenon whereby the substance upon exposure to air absorbs water for moisture and form a solution. Example, sodium hydroxide. Hygroscopy, on the other hand, is exposure to air where the substance absorbs water or moisture and doesn't go into solution. Example is concentrated sulfuric acid. Solubility of salts. The solubility of salts at a particular temperature is the amount of solute at that temperature that will saturate 100 grams of water. The salts, we discover that some salts are soluble and some are insoluble. Solubility curves. These are curves which shows how the solubility of solutes varies with temperature. And the following factors affect the solubility of solutes. One, temperature, nature of solute, and nature of solvent. Uses of solubility curves to determine the quantity of solid drop that can be dissolved in a given solvent to produce a required drop solution. To determine the type of solvent to be used to extract essential chemicals from natural sources and equally can be used for the separation of mixture of solutes by fractional crystallization. We have come to the end of our revision session of phase four. Stay connected for revision questions and answers.
the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polena Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Nana Valunga, Minister of Secondary Education. MCQ number one. Some processes are used for treatment of water for domestic and town consumption. Which processes are common? We have sedimentation and decantation, decantation and filtration, coagulation and filtration. You discover that in the house, we used to allow water to sediment and after that we do filtration and we add chemical treatment. So we have sedimentation and filtration. So B is the right answer. Question two, what are the conditions necessary for the formation of a brown coat on the surface of ice? This is basically talking about rusting and rusting requires air and water. And so A, water, vapor, B, air, C, moist air, D, warm water. So the right answer is C, moist air because it contains air and Water. Question three, what type of chemical change is represented by the chemical equation below? Oxidation, hydrolysis, hydration, and combustion. We'll see that it's an oxidation process because it uses oxygen. So A is the right answer. Question four, components of air can be separated by fractional distillation. The components of air that can be separated by fractional distillation. We have A, oxygen and water, vapor, B, oxygen and carbon dioxide, C, oxygen and nitrogen, D, oxygen and rare gases. Oxygen and nitrogen are separated by fractional distillation. So the right answer is C. Question five. The solubility of potassium nitrate at 20 degrees Celsius is 40 grams per 100 grams of water, while at 60 degrees is 110 grams per 100 grams of water. Calculate the mass of potassium nitrate crystallized when the temperature is cooled from 60 degrees to 20 degrees. When it's cooled from 60 degrees, we have 110 grams, to 20 degrees we have 40 grams, so we subtract 40 from 110, and we have as answer 70 grams. So A is the right answer. Question six. There are factors that affect solubility of solids except one. Which one? We know that factors that affect solubility are temperature, nature of solvent, and nature of solid. And so if you look at the answer, the only one answer is size of the crystal. So A is the right answer. Question seven. One property of an acid salt, such as sodium hydrogen carbonate, is normally when we study acid salts, we saw that in aqueous solution they produce hydrogen ions. And when hydrogen ions are present in solution, 
it now acts as an acid by turning blue litmus red. And from this, the answer that I've been proposed, B, is the right answer. Question A. One property of an acid salt, such as sodium hydrogen carbonate, is a repetition of the same question. Question nine. Question 10. Which of the following is not a method used to prepare soluble salts? An answer skipped out there. We have reaction of an acid with an alkali, reaction of an acid with a metal, and we have double decomposition. The answer there is actually double decomposition because double decomposition is not a method to prepare soluble salts. So the answer is C. D, skip up, which is reaction on acid with the base. An atmospheric pollutant responsible for the greenhouse effect and global warming is, we know that global warming is caused by the increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Therefore, the right answer from all the proposals are A, B, C, and D is T, that is carbon dioxide. The constant circulation of water in the form on the Earth's surface to the atmosphere is called water cycle. The process which removes water vapor from the atmosphere is Perspiration is a process whereby water is released from the surface of living organisms, animals into the atmosphere. We have transpiration, where water is lost as water vapor through the leaves in plants. We have evaporation, which is a natural source, where natural process whereby water on the surface of the air evaporates to the atmosphere. We have condensation, which is a reverse process whereby water, as a result of cooling in the atmosphere, condenses to form liquid water. And so the only up process here is G, that is condensation. Question 13. What is the percentage of the component of air in the atmosphere considered to be active air? We have already proven that rusting, breathing, combustion are processes that prove that oxygen is the active part of air. Therefore, oxygen has 21% composition in the atmosphere. Therefore, the right answer is A. Question 14. Which of the method below is not applicable in the prevention? of rusting of iron. As we have already seen, to prevent rusting of iron, we do greasing, we do electroplating, we do painting, we do galvanization, we do plastic coating and other methods. So if we look at the proposal, we have A, greasing, B, electroplating, C, moist air exposure, D, painting. So the only out answer, which is not a method of pre preventing rusting, that is the most rusting is C. Therefore, the right answer is C. Question 15. Which of the method below is not applicable in preventing rusting? That question has been repeated. Question 16. Filtered water for town consumption undergoes the following steps except one. So we saw that to treat water for town consumption, addition of lime along causes coagulation, the water, the flock, and the other solid impurities are allowed to settle, that is sedimentation. After that, the water is filtered on a sand filter using filtration, and then the clean water is 
now purified by addition of chlorine to disinfect the water, which is later stored for drinking. So we have coagulation, sedimentation, precipitation, and chlorination. Precipitation is the hot answer, therefore the right answer is C. Question 17. Study the equation below and pick out the right proposal. In this equation, we see that copper two sulfate, when it picks out five molecules of water, it changes from white to blue to become copper two sulfate pentahydrate. This is an example of an equation that shows the text for water. And we we'll look at the proposals. You have copper two sulfate pentahydrate is blue. That's not the right answer. Copper two sulfate is white. That is not the right answer. Copper two sulfate is used to test for water. That's the right proposal. Copper two sulfate is correlated with water. That's not the right proposal. And therefore, the right answer is C. Question 18. Hard water causing furring or kettles or boilers contains which of the following chemicals? Calcium sulfate causes permanent hardness. Calcium bicarbonate causes temporary hardness. Calcium chloride causes permanent hardness. Calcium hydroxide is not any of them. Therefore, the substance that causes fairing of cable, kettles and boilers is calcium hydrogen carbonate. So the right answer is E, calcium hydrogen carbonate. Structural MCQ number 19. There are water pollutants except one. Which one? Meaning that the substance, the proposals have water pollutant, and one is not a water pollutant. We have suspended solids or sediments. We have sewage and other oxygen demanding waste. We have sugar solution. We have infectious disease, infectious or disease causing organisms. A is a water pollutant, B is a water pollutant, G are water pollutants. Therefore, the only odd answer is C, that is sugar solution. We now move over to structural question. Air is a mixture of elements and compounds. One, identify the major components of pure air by completing the table below. Two, which of these components makes up active air? Sub three, state the components that is obtained, the component that is obtained from liquid air by fractional distillation. Pure air is naturally slightly acidic. Name one component responsible for this acidity. B. Acid rain is becoming a major environmental problem. Identify two substances which are a major cause of acid rain. Sub so two, state one hazard caused by acid rain. C, greenhouse effect is responsible for global warming. Identify any substance in air that is a major cause of greenhouse effect. D, state one disadvantage of the continuous use of chemical fertilizers. E, corrugated iron sheets on roofs of houses rust in industrial, faster in industrial zones than in non-industrial zones. Note here that corrugated iron sheets are sheets coated with zinc. Sub one of E, what conditions are needed for iron to rust? Sub two, explain 
while iron sheets are corroded, are coated with zinc. Sub three, identify any two substances present in the atmosphere in industrialized zones that causes corrugated iron sheets to corrode fast. And lastly, F, give two other methods by which iron can be prevented from rusting. One, air is a mixture of elements, so A sub one. Identify four components of pure air by completing the table. We have elements, nitrogen, oxygen, neon, argon, compounds, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Which of these components makes up part of active air? Oxygen is the component that makes up active air as already saw in the last. State the component that is obtained from liquid air by fractional distillation. When we studied nitrogen and or hydrogen, we saw that nitrogen and hydrogen can be separated by fractional distillation. Therefore, it can be nitrogen or oxygen. Pure air is naturally slightly acidic. Name the component responsible for this acidity. We have carbon dioxide that makes air to be slightly acidic because when carbon dioxide dissolves in rainwater, it forms carbonic acid. B sub. Acid rain is becoming a major environmental problem. Sub one, identify two substances which are a major cause of acid rain. This is basically acidic oxides that move to the atmosphere and dissolve in rainwater to form acids. We have sulfur dioxide. When sulfur dioxide dissolves in water, it forms sulfurous acid. We have nitrogen dioxide. When it dissolves in water, it forms nitrous and nitric acid, respectively, thereby making the rainwater to be acidic. Step one hazard caused by acid. Rain. It weighs down metallic structures because the acid dissolves the metal. Buildings with clay. Clay is calcium carbonate, therefore, the acid reacts with calcium carbonate, evolving carbon dioxide. It equally destroys leaves of plants. Greenhouse effect is responsible for global warming. Identify any substance in air that is a major cause of greenhouse effect. We already saw in the lesson that carbon dioxide is the component that is responsible for greenhouse effect. State one disadvantage of continuous use of chemical fertilizers. Apart from leaching and eutrophication, fertilizers are also a source of water pollution. It increases soil acidity. Corrugated iron sheets on roofs of houses rust faster in industrialized zones than in non-industrialized zone. What conditions are needed for iron to rust? The lesson, we saw two conditions necessary for rusting. There must be air, there must be air, there must be moisture or water. And therefore, condition necessary for rusting we have Air or oxygen, we have moisture or water. Explain why the iron sheets are coated with zinc. This is a method to prevent 
iron from roasting faster. So it is coated with zinc. Zinc is more reactive than iron and it produces a solid coat on of zinc oxide, which is insoluble, thus preventing rust. Identify any two substances present in the atmosphere of industrialized zones that causes corrugated iron sheets to corrode faster. Sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide are substances that dissolve in water to form acids that remove the zinc oxide layer, thereby causing corrosion of corrugated iron sheets. Give two other methods by which iron can be prevented from rusting. We saw greasing or boiling, painting, galvanization, and so on. These methods can be used to prevent rusting. Question two. Water can be described as hard or soft. A, what is soft one? Hard water. Soft two, soft water. B, give one source of hard water. C, after a long time, the inside of a kettle or boiler appears white. What is the cause of the whiteness? So two, how can this whiteness be removed? D, state two types of hardness in water and the causes of this hardness. E, what are the advantages and disadvantages of hard water? F, many substances react differently with water. What happens when the following substances are put in water? Sub one, calcium oxide. Sub two, magnesium nitride. Sub three, sodium stearate or soap. Sub four, concentrated sulfuric acid. Sub one, what is hard water? We already find hard water as water that does not lacter easily with soap or forms an insoluble scum with soap. Soft water on the other part is water that lacters easily with soap. An example of soft water is distilled water. Give one source of hard water. In limestone areas, when rainwater containing small amounts of dissolved carbon dioxide from the air passes over limestone, after a long time, the inside of the kettle or boiler appears white. Sub one. What is the cause of the whiteness? We already saw from the equation on the, in the slide that when hard water is boiled, there is the formation of an insoluble calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate that may coat the wall whitish. How can this whiteness be removed? It can be removed by adding vinegar or dilute hydrochloric acid to dissolve the insoluble carbonate as a precipitate. G, state two types of hardness in water and the causes of this hardness. We have temporary hardness. This is caused by the presence of dissolved calcium hydrogen carbonate or magnesium hydrogen 
carbon. We have temporary hardness. Temporary hardness is caused by the presence of dissolved calcium or magnesium sulfate or the presence of dissolved calcium chloride or magnesium chloride. Many substances react differently with water. What happens when the following substances are put in water? One, calcium oxide. It crumbles and dissolves to form an alkaline solution. It should be noted that this is an application that's used in painting of walls of houses with white wash. Magnesium nitride. As I said, the calcium hydroxide form releases a lot of heat. So we have an equation whereby the calcium oxide dissolves in water to form calcium hydroxide magnesium nitride. When magnesium nitride reacts with water, it releases ammonia and forms magnesium hydroxide. We have in the slide the reaction of magnesium nitride with water to form magnesium hydroxide and ammonia gas. F. Many substances react. Top two sodium stearate or soap. Soap lattice with water, or forms with water, and dissolves, and will form a scum, or a precipitate in hard water. Concentrated sulfuric acid. On reaction with water, it involves a lot of heat and gets diluted. Here we should note that we are adding sulfuric acid to water, and not the reverse. Question number three. Salts are prepared by the following general methods. One, sub one, neutralization. Sub two, action of acids on metals. Sub three, action of acids on carbonates. Sub four, double decomposition. Sub five, action of Acids on insoluble base. Sub six, direct combination of elements. For each of the method A, for each of the methods listed above, name a salt that is prepared by this method and write an equation for its preparation. B, state the method by which pure solid samples of each of the salts above could be recovered. E sub one, neutralization. We have sodium chloride. And when sodium chloride we add with dilute hydrochloric acid, when sodium hydroxide reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, as seen on the equation, sodium chloride and water is produced. The sodium chloride is recovered from the solution by evaporation to dryness. Magnesium chloride, action of acids on metals. We have magnesium chloride. When magnesium reacts with dissolve, it's dissolved in dilute hydrochloric acid 
it produces magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So there's a effervescence in that reaction. Now the magnesium chloride in aqueous solution can be recovered by evaporation to dryness. Sub three, action of acid on carbonates. Calcium chloride is an example of a salt that can be prepared by action of carbonates. By action of carbonates. When calcium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, it produces calcium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. Calcium chloride can be obtained from its solution by evaporation to dryness. Double decomposition, sub four. Silver chloride is an example of a salt that can be prepared by double decomposition. Here we have a mixture of sodium chloride and silver nitrate. When this reaction takes place, sodium is more electropositive than silver and therefore displaces silver from its compound to now form sodium chloride. And when silver chloride reacts with chlorine, with a chloride ion, it forms an insoluble white precipitate, which is silver chloride. Therefore, it's an example of a salt prepared by double decomposition. Now, as a precipitate in solution, how can the salt be obtained? We use a filter funnel with a filter paper, and we filter the solution, and the silver chloride remains on the filter paper inside the filter funnel. The silver chloride is washed with cold steel water and dried between filter papers. Action of acid on insoluble base. We have calcium sulfate. We have copper two sulfate. Sorry. When copper two sulfate reacts, copper two oxide reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, it produces copper two sulfate and water. The method of recovery of copper two sulfate from solution, copper two sulfate cannot withstand dry heating. Therefore, it is recovered from solution by method of crystallization, whereby the aqueous solution of copper two sulfate is placed in an evaporating dish and heated slowly to concentrate. The concentrate is now allowed to cool with natural formation of copper two sulfate crystals. That crystallize out of solution by picking five molecules of water to form copper two sulfate pentahydrate. Direct combination. Iron 2 sulfide is an example of a salt that can be prepared by direct combination or synthesis, whereby the iron combines with sulfur to give a black solid iron 2 sulfide. Method of recovery solid sample of salt obtained directly. We have come to the end of phase four of our whole level revision class. Our next revision lesson will be on chemistry of the elements. See you in the next revision lesson.